Welcome, my friends! In this video, we will be calculating probabilities from the normal distribution using a TI-84 calculator. If you didn't watch my video where I introduced the normal distribution, I highly recommend you check out that video first. Anthony loves to drink apple juice, and the number of ounces that he drinks in a day follows a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. If we let x represent the number of ounces of apple juice that Anthony drinks in a day, then x is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. Here is the distribution of Anthony's daily apple juice consumption. Let's briefly talk about some useful things to remember when calculating probabilities using the normal distribution. Areas underneath the curve represent probability, and the total probability is equal to 100%. In a normal distribution, 50% of the observations are smaller than the mean, and 50% of the observations are larger than the mean. So the probability x is less than 100 is 50%, and the probability x is greater than 100 is also 50%, as 100 is the mean. Also, since the normal distribution is a continuous distribution, there is no probability at an individual point. So we can also write the two previous statements as the probability x is less than or equal to 100 and the probability x is greater than or equal to 100, and they will still both be equal to 50%. The probability x equals any individual value is equal to 0, such as the probability x is equal to 100. Since the normal distribution is continuous, the probability we observe any individual value is 0. Anthony will never drink exactly 100 ounces of apple juice in a day. He might be very close, such as 99.9976 ounces, or 100.0013 ounces, but if we measure out far enough, the probability of x equaling exactly some number will be zero for any continuous distribution. Also, as the normal distribution is symmetric, any area to the right of the mean has a corresponding equal area to the left of the mean. For example, the area between 100 and 110 will be the same as the area between 90 and 100, since both 90 and 110 are 10 units away from the mean, just in opposite directions. The probability happens to be about 34% in both cases, which you might know if you are familiar with the empirical rule. Let's look at how we can calculate probabilities like this now. Consider this question. What is the probability that on any given day, Anthony drinks more than 115 ounces of apple juice? This can be translated into the probability statement, the probability that x is greater than 115. On the normal distribution graph, we can shade the area greater than 115 to help us better visualize the problem. The shaded area represents the probability that we are trying to solve for. Now, although not strictly necessary, it is common convention to convert to a z-score before plugging the numbers into the TI-84 calculator. I'll be showing you how to do it both ways, but first, let's find the z-score. We can convert x equals 115 into a z-score using the z-score formula we discussed in a previous video. z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. x is 115, mu is the mean at 100, and sigma is the standard deviation at 10. So the z-score is 115 minus 100 divided by 10, or 15 divided by 10, which is 1.5. We can create a second horizontal axis on the graph that corresponds to z-scores. A z-score of 0 always corresponds to the mean, and we just calculated that 115 corresponds to a z-score of 1.5. This tells us that 115 is 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. The probability that x is greater than 115 is equivalent to the probability z is greater than 1.5. At this stage, we need to move to the calculator. Here I am with the TI-84 calculator. We want to find the probability z is greater than 1.5, which is the same as the probability x is greater than 115. Press second, distribution, which is over the VARS key, and then select the second option which is normal CDF. First, we will go through the process with z-scores. For a TI-84 calculator, you will most likely get this menu of inputs. If you have an older calculator, you won't get this menu, and we will talk about what to do in just a moment. The calculator asks you for a lower and upper bound. These are the lower and upper bounds of the shaded area on the graph in terms of z-scores. If you remember the graph, 
the lower bound of the shaded green area was at 1.5, so we can enter 1.5. There was no upper bound since the distribution goes off into infinity in the positive direction. So we type in a large number for the upper bound. 10 is large enough as it represents 10 standard deviations above the mean. Depending on the area, you might have to put negative 10 for the lower bound sometimes if the area you are solving for is in the left tail of the distribution. The mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 for a standard normal z distribution, so we don't need to change those. Scroll down, select paste, and then press enter. Now you will have the screen as it appears on a TI-83 calculator. If I scroll over, you can see that we have the normal CDF function with 1.5, 10, 0, 1. Simply enter in these inputs for a TI-83 calculator to get the same answer. Note that 0 and 1 are the defaults, so even if you don't put those in the calculator, it will assume that you have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Press enter and you will get the probability, which is 0 0.0668. Now, I recommend always going to the calculator with z-scores as it simplifies things a bit. But if you are in a rush and you don't want to find the z-score first, you can enter in the values in terms of x to get the same answer, which I will show you now. Press second, distribution again, select the second option, which is normal CDF. Now instead of the z-score of 1.5, we want the number in terms of x, which is 115 ounces of apple juice for the lower bound. The upper bound is now in terms of x, so 10 isn't large enough. It needs to be some really large number, at least 10 or so standard deviations above the mean. I usually just put in a really large number, like 9999999. The mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. Scroll down and paste, then press enter, and you will see we get the same answer. There is a 6.68% chance that Anthony drinks more than 115 ounces of apple juice in a day, which is the shaded area from before on the graph. Let's try another one. What is the probability Anthony drinks between 88 and 110 ounces of apple juice in a day? This can be written as the probability 88 is less than x is less than 110. Graphically, here is the area that we are trying to solve for, which I have shaded in green. Now we need to convert x equals 88 and x equals 110 into two z-scores. The z-score corresponding to 88 is 88 minus 100 divided by 10, which equals negative 1.2. The z-score corresponding to 110 is 110 minus 100 divided by 10, which is equal to 1. We can add the second horizontal axis and put our z-scores on the graph. The probability 88 is less than x is less than 110 becomes the probability negative 1.2 is less than z is less than 1 if we convert to z-scores. Let's go back to the calculator to find the answer. Again, we go to second distribution, normal CDF. For the lower bound, we need the lower bound of our shaded area, which is negative 1.2. The upper bound is the upper bound of the shaded area, which is one in terms of z-scores. Since we are entering z-scores in, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Scroll down, paste, and then press enter, and you should get 0 0.7263 as your answer. There is a 72.63% chance that Anthony drinks between 88 and 110 ounces of apple juice in a day, which is the shaded area from our graph. We can also go backwards and translate from a probability back into the raw score, in our case, ounces of apple juice. For example, on 90% of days, Anthony drinks at most how many ounces of apple juice? Notice this question has given us a probability, 90%, and wants us to find the corresponding ounces of apple juice. So again, it's helpful to draw the graph. We want the value x such that Anthony drinks less apple juice than x on 90% of days. So the area below our value for x is equal to 90%. As long as we know how much area is below or to the left of our desired value on the distribution, we can use the calculator to solve for that value. Again, press second, distribution, but this time we are going backwards. We don't want normal CDF as normal CDF calculates probabilities. We want inverse norm, which calculates either z-scores or raw scores, depending on your inputs. 
so we select option 3. Again, you won't get this menu on an older calculator, but I'll show you what to do in just a minute. The area is the area to the left of your desired value, which for us is 90%, which we must input as a decimal. If you have a TI-84 plus CE, you might get options for left, center, or right for the tail. Just choose left to match the calculator that I'm using. Now, if you want to calculate a z-score, you can enter 0 and 1 for the mean and standard deviation. Press enter to paste, and you will be at the screen as it will appear on a TI-83 calculator. Just separate the three arguments by commas, and you should match my output if you have an older calculator. Again, 0 and 1 are optional, as they are the default. Press enter, and we get a z-score of 1.28. You can use the raw score formula to convert this to a raw score. X is equal to Z times sigma plus mu, which becomes 1.28 times 10 plus 100, which is equal to 112.8. On 90% of days, Anthony drinks at most 111.28 ounces of apple juice. This is the unknown value on our distribution. If you want to use the function in terms of X, go back to inverse norm by pressing second distribution, enter the area to the left again, which is 0.9, and set the mean to 100, and the standard deviation to 10. And when we enter everything in, and paste, and press enter, we get the same number as before, but now it's not been rounded. Just to be clear, let's briefly review the calculator functions. Normal CDF calculates probability, and takes the arguments lower bound, upper bound, mu, and sigma. If the user sets mu equals 0 and sigma equals 1, Enter z-scores for the lower and upper bound to find the probability. If the user sets mu and sigma to the values from the problem, enter raw scores, x, for the lower and upper bound to find the probability. Inverse norm calculates a z-score or a raw score, x. The arguments are area to the left, mu, and sigma. A z-score is calculated if the user sets the mean to 0 and the standard deviation to 1. A raw score is calculated if the user sets mu and sigma to the values from the problem. Alright my friends, we have finished our discussion of normal probabilities using the TI calculator. We will be exploring many more fun and exciting statistical topics that you won't want to miss, so make sure to check out our other videos.